People love to walk and bike, for relaxation, for exercise, to get places like school, work, and stores. The benefits are numerous, improved health, cost savings, and smaller carbon footprints. In fact, Minnesota has become a leader in non-motorized transportation. Biking and walking have increased significantly in the Twin Cities metro area during the past decade. And these activities are catching fire statewide. And increasingly, we see with the grand challenges society faces, climate change, public health, that encouraging active travel, bicycle trips, makes sense. U of M researchers have partnered with MnDOT, the Minnesota Department of Health, and several other state and local agencies to measure bicycle and pedestrian traffic. It really comes down to uh, having more information about safety, um, where to make investments, uh, the economic benefits, and the health impacts of bicycling and walking. Having those numbers to show that the investments uh, are justified, are being used, is really valuable when talking to council members, when talking to the mayor's office and other decision makers. The research project developed ways to count and analyze bike and pedestrian traffic using a mix of manual and automated methods. The researchers found that bicycle and pedestrian traffic volumes follow distinct patterns that can be used to estimate non-motorized traffic on city streets, sidewalks, and trails. We see higher traffic where there are uh, more destinations for people to travel and do things they want to do. MnDOT is evaluating automated counting methods through a project that will conclude in 2015. The project uses automated technologies for counting bicycles and pedestrians on trails, bike lanes, sidewalks, and shoulders in various urban and rural locations in Minnesota. The city of Minneapolis has been counting bikes and pedestrians since 2007, so we actually had a pretty good methodology down for doing manual counts. And what Greg and MnDOT were able to do through this project is apply and refine the methodology that Minneapolis had been using to a number of communities uh, throughout Minnesota. MnDOT also is considering how to incorporate such non-motorized traffic data into its existing traffic database. Researchers recommended that MnDOT coordinate statewide counts and work with local agencies to establish a network of automated monitoring sites across the state. The, the idea here is that by, ha by establishing networks of permanent counters in, in conjunction with short duration samples, we can completely characterize a traffic network. That's our goal. That's what we have for vehicles. We don't have it for bikes and pets. Once this report is completed, we will be going out to communities statewide or having a, a workshop um, kind of centrally here where they can come and we would do a training on how they can install their own equipment, how to collect data, and how to analyze it. In addition to supporting state goals, this research also is contributing to federal traffic monitoring standards. Such data already are used in cities like Minneapolis and Duluth for planning bike and pedestrian facilities. In Minneapolis, where biking has increased 70% in recent years, counting is now a routine operation for the Public Works Department. The city maintains about 80 miles of trails, which tally an amazing 28 million miles of use per year. Indeed, life is a journey, and Minnesota is fast becoming the place where every step counts.